First Chronicles 16, 10. Multimedia, please. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them that rejoice that seek the Lord. The choice of that song is to re-examine our lives. Is our church coming every Sundays or fellowship? Is it a ritual or is what come deep down from our hearts? God is not about our actions, but what resides inside our heart. And when you are coming to the presence of God, that song says, your heart must be what? Pure. How pure is your heart this morning? Coming to seek his face, how pure is your heart? Or are you being troubled with what you see around? The economic downturn, the insecurity, is that what dictates your actions? Is that what occupied your mind? All the promises that God has for you. January, February, now we are in October. You are still reciting the memory verse for the year. And you felt that God is not doing anything. That you've not experienced that miracle. But let me tell you one thing. That that faith that you add on to have been the one sustaining you. The greatest miracle that could ever experience is for someone to sleep and wake up. That is the best miracle you can ever experience. I can tell you that. Every other thing is just an addition. It's a bonus. The material is a bonus. It's when you are alive, strength with good health, that you can think that I need to have this or that. The best miracle you can ever experience is to sleep and wake up the following day and say, ah, thank God I'm alive. So I don't want us to get carried away with the challenges of life. No. The Bible says we walk by faith and what? And not by sight. Our faith will definitely manifest where we now walk by what? By sight. That is when God has fulfilled his promises. But we don't allow our heart to be troubled whenever we are coming to the presence of God. To seek his face, we must come with a pure heart. You do have to have a grudge with someone. You do have to be envious of another person. Those are the things that can impede our, <clears throat> our progress, our sources. Psalm 104, I mean 100 verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his court with what? With praises. Be thankful unto him and bless his what? His name. That tells you when you wake up every morning, the greatest miracle. You need what? To be thankful. You need to praise him. You need to, to what? To appreciate him. You know, when, when I was called yesterday that um, I'm going to do an exhortation, I said, ah, what will I say to people? Because I myself, I need to be encouraged. But the Spirit ministers to me that there's a word for you that a lot of people were there. They needed to have an understanding that the miracle they are chasing all around, that is not a miracle. The miracle is that they will slept and they wake up the following day. It's the greatest miracle they can ever experience. Every other thing, the Bible says, seek the kingdom of God and every other thing that we, what? Added unto you. So it's the living that can seek. So, is your heart pure? Come into his presence to seek him this morning? Or you are still doubting what God can do for you? You know, at times, when, when, when I Especially, you know, I always get scared when I'm traveling, especially by air. Because we know that when things go the other way, the chances of survival is what? It's always zero. Always zero. So, anytime I've now realized that, how strong then is my faith? The pilot that I don't know from Adam, I believe he would pilot the plane to the destination. How strong is that my faith in that pilot? Every day we enter buses. We don't know maybe the driver is being satisfied to drive. No, we still put our trust, our faith in that driver that will take us to that destination. Then why do we now doubt God who created all things and make them be that we find it difficult to exercise that same faith we 
we exhibit in or show in human beings like us. So I want us to have a new beginning. A new re- a rethink about how we see God in our lives, in our actions, in our day to day. The best way to preach the gospel is through our lifestyle. How well do you worship God with your life? That somebody will see that every God that, okay, ah, I appreciate. I want to be part of these people. I want to be a friend to this sister. I want to be a friend to this brother. Not because of his wealthy, but because of what? His lifestyle preach and draws people near. Does your lifestyle draws people to the kingdom? Or it pushes them away? So we need to have everything. We need to examine our lives. In the book, in the book of Hebrew, 11, 1. Now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. As long as we live, there is hope. A dead man does not have any hope. So you be alive. You've already achieved the greatest miracle anybody can ever expect. They always say the best brain, the richest, are found where? In this cemetery. They could not achieve anything. Or the best brain or the best riches is there. But there you are that God is still giving you that strength. God gives you that wisdom to navigate those challenges that you are seeing. Whatever that you can see physically is temporal. It's temporal. It's the word of God that will live forever. And it will always come to pass no matter what. It matters, but it will definitely become what? Fulfilled. So, dear brethren, our life should be the one preaching the word. Our life should be the one drawing people to the ministry, to the kingdom. Should be the one liberating the life of others who have gone astray. Should be the one that will revive those that have lost hope. I saw some clip recently, an, an old man, I think in the, should be in late 50s or early 60s, jumped through because of depression or this late Todd Midland Bridge. A lot of people are just trying to rescue him, but he decided to end his own life. Because of what? The people so around him, none could have been life that would have preached to him that there is a second chance for you. That this is not the end of the road. You can see. But the old man ended his life by jumping to the lagoon. Another one will just climb the power mic. I mean, this power line, whatever, stop. I chop on the wire to end his whole life. We quite understand that there is depression everywhere. But we need to understand what God promised us. When we dwell more in the world, when we have a better understanding of the, the opportunity that we have to be in the kingdom. You know, me and my friend, we always say something. I said, when you make use of common sense, you attempt to make a common mistake. But when you use your number seven, and Christ is that number seven, you melt, you always stand unique. Because you have that number seven. Because Christ is in you. That is your number seven. Common sense, you tend to make common mistakes. But embrace that number seven. Then you will be what? You will stand unique in every aspect of life. Hallelujah. I hope I'm speaking to somebody this morning. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm a good preacher when it comes to the drama. But <laughs> I'm trying to pass the message across, you know. But we thank God for, for everything, for, for, for keeping us alive. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 11, it says, Seek out the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Always is not time bound. Every second of life, we need to acknowledge him. Every second of life, walking on the road. You know, there are some certain things that you will see. We don't really quite understand the victory that we are having that we cannot see physically. If God opened our eyes to see what surrounds us, nobody will be able to even step out of their house. But a lot of battles have been won on our behalf without our knowledge. Where somebody stands in a second, gets killed, 
a lot of people stand there, survive. That tells you how God works. So, our life is not time bound coming to praise God. It's us to be what? Seconds. Every seconds, every minute. We should what? Acknowledge him. Seek his face always. That was the Bible says. God bless us.